from the College by the Lake, Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. Local, regional, national, and international guests discussing the issues and topics affecting the way you live are on Forum, the North Idaho College Public Forum, with your host and moderator, political scientist, Tony Stewart. Welcome to today's program. We're very pleased today to deal with the subject called diversity in music, and we have three very, very talented guests, and we've been doing a lot in this field lately, and we're going to uh, interview them and talk about their background, which is uh, most impressive as professional musicians. And then our treat for you today is that they will perform uh, some songs that I think you'll very much enjoy. I first of all welcome to the program to my far left, um, Mr. Tom Rutley, and Mr. Rutley holds a very, very uh, distinguished background. Uh, he has performed with Santana and with uh, the very famous Ray Charles, uh, and uh, we'll get more into his background uh, as we interview him. He's also associated with North Idaho College, uh, doing some instruction in the field of music. And next to him is Bob Simmons, who, and, and I should back up to say that uh, uh, Tom Rutley will be on bass today, and Bob Simmons will be on the guitar and he uh, has worked with this particular group for the last five years and he instructs in music and in Coeur d'Alene at Burt's Music and he recently was the opening for George Benson and he too has had many many years experience and we're very delighted to welcome both of you to the program and next to Bob is Padman Rutley and she has a very long history uh, she was an opening act for Glenn Yarborough and also Ike and Tina Turner at the Hungry Eye in San Francisco some years ago in addition to that, she was a member of the Dan Licks and the Hot Licks, uh, and she also toured in Japan with the Merle Sanders Trio, uh, like the other two uh, most, most talented. Our three now work together and are known as the Lake City Rhythm News. Uh, we're so delighted to have you on the program today, and uh, we are even going to have you back next week, and I know our viewers will get a chance to hear a lot of very good music, and we thank you for some performances that you've done for some events that we've been very much involved in. Uh, thank you once again. And I'm very pleased as always to have regular panelist uh, Janelle Burke who uh, is an attorney in the state of Idaho and I shall ask Janelle to commence today's questioning. We had a wonderful conversation right before the show and I'd like to help our viewers get to know you better like I was able to. So can you tell us a little bit about how you first got hooked on music? What was it that came up and grabbed you? Padma, would you like to tell us about how you really got interested in music? Well, it actually happened at home. My father was um, a singer. Actually, he's a contractor, but he sang and performed in a few places, so I grew up with a lot of music in my life, and uh, then high school, I think, just... Um, and you were in the a cappella choir? In the a cappella choir, right. And from and there you bridged out into some jazz? Right, and performed locally in our little town, and did uh, fashion shows and things like that, and then later, you know, started studying and going to some of the conservatories. and. Music and Arts Institute in San Francisco. And so here you are today. Yes. <laughs> well, how about you, Bob? Uh, where's home for you, and how did you get interested? Well, um, home, home. <laughs> home, home is, is uh, I was actually born and raised in uh, Southern California, and at that time, almost everybody played music. And so I was um, emulating Beatles and Rolling Stones and what have you, but um, at high school, I had a very a very uh, disciplined teacher, and he was able to instill in me about uh, receiving the rewards of music and, and its hard work. And so I'm, I'm very grateful to Dean Perry, and he's, he's in every one of my songs. So. <laughs> How about you, Tom? Uh, what interested you? You told us an, an interesting story before the show. Oh, an interesting story. Well, uh, I guess uh, I was determined to play drums when I was a kid, like about eight or nine. And I broke my first drum head, and they told me to play the trumpet instead. So <laughs> I did that, and then that led into everything. It was too big for the trumpets, and they needed a tuba player, so I played tuba. And that branched me into this, because one of my teachers told me, you're not going to make any money playing tuba. So I said, oh. yeah. So I took up this and played electric bass. And uh, remember the 
uh, a friend of mine in school told me, he says, you about ready to graduate. And he says, well, what are you going to do when you grow up? And I says, well, I'm not sure. I'll be a banker, an accountant or something. He says, but you don't have any accounting classes. You know, all you're doing is playing music. He says, you're probably going to play music, don't you think? And I said, maybe so. I think I did most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> and and what was your college major? Share college? with the audience. Oh, computer programmer <laughs> with a music minor. And then I ended up in the music room all the time. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Bob, you've done a little performing locally. Uh, can you share with our viewers some of the places that you... Just you about every place with running water and then some. <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, over the course of 18 years, obviously, I've... Um, you know, I used to be in medicine, actually. I was an orthopedic physician's assistant. I had graduated from USC, and when I arrived in Idaho, I uh, was working at the hospital for oh, maybe about nine months or so, but I just ended up answering my heart, you know, my, my original calling. And so at the time, I was uh, showing people what I knew about guitar, and so I, I don't know if it was quite teaching or not. I was just simply sharing. But for five dollars I would come over to your house and <laughs> teach you for an hour and a half or until I thought you were all filled up for the day. And, but that eventually uh, led to some engagements, you know, some weddings and things like that, a lot of private functions. Um, when I finally decided to make it a true living, that's when I really started to study music and I've, um, I've studied it on my own. I haven't really had the benefit of formal study, but I've literally educated myself in uh, theory and such and I feel comfortable now as far as playing many different kinds of music. So. Well, that's certainly, as I introduced in the program, that you have uh, not only been interested in music since you were very young, and, and I really like what Bob had to say about uh, he followed his heart. I think all of you have done that, and m music, like many other professions, is something that some individuals at a very young age uh, appreciate and understand. I think we have very special talents in life, and certainly you have followed yours. Uh, and as I also introduced the program, you've been very, very fortunate to, to perform with some of the best known uh, people, again, Tom, like with Ray Charles and others. And before I ask any more questions, I'm going to ask you to give our viewers in Canada and the Northwest a treat and, and share your talents. And I believe that, uh, Padme, that you may introduce the first song that you're going to do today. Okay, we're going to do a tune called Unity that we wrote. Uh, really inspired by the elections is how we got into writing this song and concerned about the unity of people together. So this is it, unity. Come on, people, and gather round you here. Time is the essence. Listen to me clear. Have they been lying to us? Hand in the face. People are tired with a rage and disgrace. Yes, truth is a way. Love's here to stay. Truth is a way. Love's here to stay. How do we tell them so they'll understand? Is there a compromise still living in this land? Well, people are a power, but they're falling asleep. Can't remember where they are sinking in the Genocide and simulation 
education, prayer and supplication, values reunited, river for the nation. Well, as always, that's beautiful. I wish we had a, a large audience so we could have a standing ovation for uh, that oh, great talent. <laughs> Tom, you're, you're pleased with the fact that we have this opportunity. Uh, I have a, a question that I will ask uh, Tom before we get into the next number. Uh, Tom, tell us a little bit about what it was like uh, performing with Santana and Ray Charles. Yeah, Tom. A lot of money exchanged hands, I'll tell you that. <laughs> I didn't get much of it either. <laughs> but, um, the uh, most dynamic parts about both were that uh, it seemed as though the, even with all the garbage going on, the stresses of road life and all those other things, people were uh, musicians, some of them were desirous of making communication with their audience. Uh, and some of the best times I remember with those two bands and other bands is when the audience is as excited as you are about what's going on. And um, the other stuff is just, uh, you know, uh, I was talking with the wife about that, we should probably write a book about how to survive on the road while you're trying to get your message out. And uh, uh, one with Ray Charles in particular, I remember, is that we did four shows in a particular night, and it happened like four nights in a row, and each show, the smoke screen got thicker. In other words, the smoke would build up each, and so by the fourth set, everybody was kind of saying, well, music is wonderful, but uh, I'm about ready to die, you know, and it's like, you know, it was real interesting, but, uh, and it goes downhill from there. Okay. <laughs> no, thank you. Experience. Yeah, you had a... <laughs> Tell them about the shoes, that was the Ray Charles Well, the shoes. Ray Charles rockers. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they made everybody wear patent leather shoes, and that was my big concession at uh, 20 whatever, 26 or whatever, because I had never worn patent leathers and never thought I'd need them. But they've come in handy in <laughs> North <laughs> Idaho quite a bit. It's a, it's a standing joke when we, <laughs> it's a Ray Charles shoe gig, you know. So okay. Put the rockers on. And you shared that with our viewers. <laughs> Bob, thank you for pulling that out there and letting us know that. Uh, Pat, before we do the next number, also, why don't you tell us a little bit about um, that you oftentimes think of you as uh, a group emphasizing jazz, but you... Uh, do a lot of variety, and we talked about that before on the air. Uh, not only does that, I would suppose, make it more exciting for you to have some variety, but also your audiences are, are more appreciative of that. Would you just share that with us? Well, I feel that <clears throat> there are so many different people, different kinds of people in the world. So when you, you know, it, it always has a jazz influence because that's there, you know, from our background. But. Um, we really like sharing just all the different kinds of music because there's different kinds of people, folk and and uh, reggae and and, and rhythm and blues rhythm and, and blues some folksy and jazz. And right. <laughs> yes. Well, yeah. I, I, and watching, uh, <coughs> listening to some of your performances, uh, I've certainly seen that. And in both today's program and next week, I think our viewers who have great appreciation of music will will observe that. I'm going to, at this time, have you to introduce the second song that you're going to do today. I believe it's called God Bless the Child. Correct, and it's a kind of a legendary ballad tune, uh, Billie Holiday, and I always really like to do it as a tribute to her, because she was really a fine vocalist and person. Really, Actually, I've had the pleasure of meeting a few people that knew her personally. I never did, but she had a ver very beautiful spirit. So to Billy Holiday, God Bless the Child. Then that's God shall get, then that's not shall lose. So the Bible said, and it still is news. Well, Mama may have, and Papa, you may have, but 
God bless the child. God bless the child. That's God is own. God bless a child. Bats got his own, 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 own. Money, you got lots of friends. Crowd and round, round the door. of bread and such you can help yourself but don't take too much cause mama may have and papa he may have but God bless the child God bless the child of bread and such you can help yourself but don't take too much cause mama may have and papa he may have but God bless the child God bless the child but the child.
Well, thank you again so much. That was that is wonderful. And Padma, I've said to you on a number of occasions that you have this remarkable voice, and, and we appreciate you sharing it with our audience. I shall ask uh, Janelle to continue the questioning. Well, this song is a great example of music as communication. Uh, music is the universal language, some have said. I think before the show, Bob, you shared uh, the words of a famous person. Can you tell our audience? Uh, <laughs> Old Crazy Fred, as I call him. Uh, Nietzsche has a quote that without music, life would be a mistake, and so on. And it is. It is the, the, the means of communication. Uh, let's talk about that a little bit. Tom, uh, what do you think? Uh, communication? Yes. <laughs> you communicate in all different ways. And you said oftentimes people come up and, and, and you've, you've touched uh, their soul. Yeah, that's, that's a good reminder. That usually, you know, we're always picking songs for their message content. Each song that's picked is for a particular reason. You know, one person in the group will throw it out and say, well, let's do it. You run through it and you say, well, does that, does that convey something that we're looking to convey? And if it's a yay from everyone, then we'll keep it. If it doesn't, then we'll dump it. Uh, and it's, it's, it's uncanny. Uh, the wife or Bob even will come to me after a, a job, any job, outside, inside, you know, playing for a duck shoot or what, whatever it is, and there'll be a person or two that'll come up and chase after the wife and tell her, uh, so-and-so particular song touched my heart, and we just kind of slows us up and we we're thinking about that, you know, well, we're getting paid for this and we're getting this and we're getting that, but that brings us right back to what we're doing this for, basically, and uh, all the stresses in life, uh, whatever they may be for any particular person, uh, when something like that happens, where a person is actually moved or touched, or they say, well, I'm going to take up singing again, or I'm going to take up guitar again because of what I heard today, or something like that, that's a real, a real charge. And the uh, Lord's been real gracious that way that he keeps people coming up and telling us that, so we'll stick with this thing, because a lot of times we get pulled down by uh, earthly weirdnesses. I guess that's the best way to put it, you know. Yes, Padma. I, that sparked something in me about, I feel too that music doesn't really come from you, but it comes through you. It touches another spirit, and we're all, I believe anyway, one spirit universally. And so that sometimes that person, can, if they can be touched, that is really rewarding to me, not, not egotistically, but just because you touch somebody's heart and hopefully there, there was some kind of healing or something. I, I like to think of it in that way, that we can be used as a tool in that way. So, so it comes yeah. through you and goes on to your audience, and it's a great interaction with the people for whom you are performing. Is that right? Right. I I feel it's a way of sharing. It's a, it's a good, it's a wonderful feeling because that's when you can really be one through music. And they share back with you. They do absolutely. Couldn't be anywhere without them. They are it. <laughs> I want to follow up on that, uh, and again, I'll start with Padma. Certainly, we've had some very strong evidence of how powerful music is in uh, the whole movements of a society and, and public policy. I'm thinking of the civil rights movement in the United States, particularly in the 1960s, when uh, there were a lot of marches uh, on voting rights mm -hmm. and for legislation and, and for integrating facilities, and at, at the heart of that movement, it appeared to me were two things, particularly the Southern Christian Leadership Conference and Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. And that was his powerful message that he always gave, but it also involved uh, music at, at all those gatherings. And so, mm -hmm. Padma, why don't you, you've already done such an eloquent job, but expand upon that and talk about how music can be used to convince people to uh, really affect the social behavior in society. Oh, I, I, I think it has, even in, in the Beatles reaching out, you know, so many of the, it, it definitely is a way of communicating through universal understanding and, and love and bringing the world together, really. I think music is one of the <coughs> strong, would you call it, ministries or whatever. That, uh. Bob, would you like to elaborate upon it with your experience? I, I was just sitting there listening to also as you were playing the guitar and Tom, the bass, and this didn't happen overnight. I know you have great talent, but you've worked very hard at it. And, and even when words are not being uh, 
saying as the uh, panel was not singing, <coughs> just, just the music of the instruments and also as powerful. Would you give us some example of how you and other people are affected by the instruments themselves? Did you notice that we never looked at each other when we were playing? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's actually part of that communication. And it's a, it's a, it's a very special language. Um, the, uh, the diversity of our sets, so to speak, in our shows and the different people that we play for um, is kind of a, an attestment to um, all the different eras that we draw from, is what I'm trying to say. Um, drawing from jazz and ethnic music and folk music and such, we, we draw from so many different peoples and different groups, it's hard not to touch somebody in the group, you know, regardless of who we're playing for. If it's a group of 10 or 10,000, you know, it's, we have something for everybody, so to speak. Mm -hmm. we, uh, we do a few contemporary songs that we kind of change around, and uh, sometimes we'll search for a, a ballad of some sort, you know, that maybe reflects um, something that we're, we're doing at the time, you know. So mm -hmm. selection's very important to meet the audience and it the is. needs of yeah. both that audience and you. It is, and, and a lot of times you have to kind of revisit a song that maybe was passed over before and uh, once again, if it was a, a ballad, maybe cradle it like a baby that it is. And if it maybe it was a, a nice little foot tapper, maybe it just needs a little kick in the rump. You know, so. I got the, the signal we're out of time, but the good news is to our viewers that we'll have this wonderful group called the Lake City Rhythm News back again next week. I thank you for being with us today. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I do invite you to be back next week, and we'll continue this discussion and some more wonderful music. Until then, please have a good week. I am Tony Stewart. The North Idaho College Public Forum was videotaped live from the studios of instructional technology on the campus of North Idaho College for viewing at this more appropriate time. We invite you to join us again next week for another all-new edition of the North Idaho College Public Forum on this public television station. From the College by the Lake, Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. Local, regional, national, and international guests discussing the issues and topics affecting the way you live are on Forum, the North Idaho College Public Forum, with your host and moderator, political scientist, Tony Stewart. I welcome you back to part two of our two-week series with the Lake City Rhythm News. Uh, last week, for those viewers who were with us, we welcomed all three members of that very, very fine uh, uh, musical group, but uh, Bob Simmons could not come back this week. It was a, as we were taping the second show, it was his son's birthday, and so he had a very special occasion uh, for his son. But we're so pleased to welcome back, uh, first of all, is Tom Rutley. Uh, he will be on bass today, and he is an extremely talented person with great professional uh, background. He has performed with Santana, and also, all of you will know uh, the great works of Ray Charles, and Tom has had the pleasure of touring with him. He is also associated uh, with North Idaho College in that he does some instruction in music at our institution. Uh, Tom, welcome back. We look forward to another week of interviews and well, some more wonderful music. Well, yeah, thank you. <laughs> and I'm equally happy to have uh, Padma Rutley back, and uh, she too comes with us with a great professional background in music. Uh, she has been a uh, uh, opening uh, uh, in uh, music in the past for Glenn Yarborough and also for Ike and Tina Turner. And it's my understanding those openings were at what was called the Hungry Eye in San Francisco. And but what talent Padma to uh, be associated with. And she also was a member of the Dan Licks and the Hot Licks. Uh, and she toured in Japan with the Merle uh, Sanders uh, trio. You both just have such great credentials. And we're very fortunate that you live in North Idaho. And our viewers may not know that you have performed at many, many events, and uh, you've given your time to a lot of good causes, and uh, we're very grateful to have you here and, and the generous time that uh, you're giving to our program. Uh, and as always, I'm very pleased to have regular panelist Janelle Burke, who is an attorney in the state of Idaho. We shall ask Janelle to open program number two with the Lake City Rhythm News. One of the things that many musicians like is all different kinds of music. Um, it, musicians 
don't necessarily limit themselves to just one kind, although they may gravitate toward that in their own personal performance. But uh, can you tell us something about the kinds of music that you like? And we'll start with Padma. Intersperse with that a little bit of your training and background and what brought you to that particular kind of music that you perform. Well, I think part of it, traveling, <coughs> excuse me, traveling around, you know, as you perform and going on the road, and just being different places in different countries, um, you broaden your scope and understanding. It's, it's kind of like cooking, too. I like, I'm real eclectic <laughs> that way. And um, I just love people, and there's all kinds of people. So, so when um, you went to Japan, you heard the oriental sounds, I would take right. it. Right. That was quite different and a different scale. They, mostly in those countries is pentatonic scale, which is a whole different concept and <coughs> pardon me in hearing then in fact they say that the people oftentimes that come here from a country like that we almost sound out of tune at first to them it's kind of interesting you know and then we go there and I suppose sometimes feel that way although I, I think it's just kind of neat but all those different sounds right. a myriad of sounds uh, Tom what about you uh, did you have a classical background or never uh, really? Never, until I grew up. And then, um, let's see, music. I got the regular thing, public school. I was brought up through public school. Uh, trumpet, tuba, and that evolved to acoustic bass, right? Because there wasn't much money to be made on sousaphone. So the teacher advised me to take uh, uh, acoustic bass and my parents they were neat enough to give me a summer's worth of bass lessons. And then a friend told the jazz band teacher that I had taken those lessons, and he called me in on the board and said, you, we need you in the band. I said, no, 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 I can't play well enough for that. And he pulled me in, so I played, started playing the jazz band. So I got exposed to, let's say, classical music through the symphonic band, and then jazz through the jazz band all through high school. And he used to bring in, uh, let's say, veterans or... Uh, professionals into the high school band uh, and show us how it actually would go like in a studio situation or whatever so like when we got out of high school we were ready to go to work sort of and so that was kind of nice but the more music you do it seems as though the more uh, the the broader your view has to become so like as a professional musician you're n most likely required to play you know you have to have 10 different styles under your belt if you're a working musician. You know, if you're a pro that's gone big or whatever, you're playing one style usually. But if you have to play for your income, then you're going to have to play everything. You know, anybody. Uh, what I played in the uh, Playboy Club for a year, and so every two weeks or one week, you'd have a new show. You know, three shows a night and all that garbage. And, uh, you know, it came from, you know, country western to comedian. So then you're like, well, what do we do to this week? You know, and it's <laughs> like, you're well, all right. And you have to start flexing. And that's, I think that came out into the kind of music that we like to express now. Uh, Is it good to be diverse like that, do you think? Is it good? What do you yes. think? <laughs> yes. And, and you told me once that you thought it was what kept you, you alive, that, that kept diversity. Kept me alive or... Uh, at least playing, because uh, at a time or two, I thought about quitting music because of the way it was brought to me. You know, and, it'd be kind uh, of boring if you yeah, did it the same thing. Yeah, it got kind of time. boring and weird. And you said, "Well, gee, if this is it, I don't need this." You know, but uh, and I remember I used to say when I was in high school, "Oh, I'll never touch that classical garbage and this and that." And as I started growing as a musician, I said, "Gee, I need to get that arco rolling." So I talked to a guy, one of the guys in the symphony in San Francisco and took some lessons at, uh, at the old age of 23 or something <laughs> like that, you know, but I needed that. That was something that was lacking in my whole spectrum, and so I said, well, I better get plugged in. You know? It was a lot of fun. So, Padma, you're saying it's okay for people to enjoy every kind of music. <laughs> oh, yes, I think so. And, and, you know, oftentimes people will come up and they'll say, well, uh, could we hear more, could we hear blues, or could we hear country folk, or how about some more jazz? And you find that if you have a diversified audience, too, then you can kind of satisfy a larger portion of that audience by doing everybody's kind of happy. But then you it. put your own style to it. Right, right. It's fun. 
<laughs> well, Padma, we're going to entertain our audience again with music as we did last week, and uh, this time I'm going to have you to introduce the first number that you and Tom are going to do. Okay, well this tune is a Taj Mahal tune, and I hope that Taj will accept the fact that I've incorporated it into um, a very personal song by calling it the Idaho Fishing Song, because, you know, Idaho is large, fishing is one of the features, so here we go, Fish and Blues. <laughs> Bet you're going fishing all of the time, baby going fishing too. Bet your life, your sweet wife's gonna catch more fish than you. Well, many fish bite if you got good bait. And here's a little tip that I would like to relate. Many fish bite if you got good bait. I'm a going fishing, yeah, I'm going fishing. My baby going fishing too. I went on down to my favorite fishing hole, baby grabbed me a pole and line. Thrown my pole on in, caught a nine pound catfish. Now you know I brought him home for supper time. Yeah, many fish bite if you got good bait. Here's a little tip that I would like to relate. Many fish bite if you got good bait. I'm a going fishing, yeah, I'm going fishing. My baby going fishing too. Baby brother about to drop me out of my mind, say, can I go fishing with you? Well, I took him on down to his favorite fishing hole. Now, what do you think that he did do? I pulled a great big fish at the bottom of the pond. Now he laughed and he ran and he was real gone. Many fish bite if you got good bait. I'm a going fishing. Yeah, I'm going fishing. My baby going fishing too. Well, put them in the pot, baby, put them in the pan. Honey, cook them till they're nice and brown. Take a batch of corn cakes and take them, mama, and chomp them things. Yeah, chomp them all down to sing a mini fish bite if you got good bait. And here's a little tip that I would like to relate. Many fish bite if you got good bait. Yeah, I'm going fishing. Oh, I'm going fishing. My baby going fishing too. Yeah, I'm going fishing. Oh, I'm going fishing. My baby going fishing too. Woo, 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 woo. Well, that is <coughs> just lovely. And we have a lot of fishing contests in Idaho, and so maybe you should be invited to kick off the next contest with with this song. Oh. <laughs> I, I know that Padma needs to uh, get something to drink there for her voice. Uh, Tom, I would like to ask you somewhat what Janelle was asking, and that is, since you do a lot of variety, and we've introduced this as diversity <coughs> in music uh, on these two programs that we're doing, is there a particular uh, music that you find, you and uh, Padma, is your favorite? Uh, I know last week we talked about you do lots of jazz and something you call folksy jazz and rhythm and blues. Uh, do you have a favorite? Deep question. A favorite? Uh, no. Uh, things I don't like. I think I think I might, you know, alienate some people or whatever. I can handle almost anything except the the monster metal or whatever heavy metal. Other than that, I, it's open open season. I think uh, from, you know. I won't even mention, but you know just, that's the only one I can't handle, and that's because it's too uh, it's too overbearing for me. Now that's that's my limit, you know. So then I can handle the classics and stuff like that in degrees, you know. Uh, I don't, because what I feel is that 
somebody out there must feel it. And of course the metal dudes do, they must feel it. Uh, if the music is created, then there's somebody out there that's accepting it. So it's like a communication. So whatever that is. It's choices for different people. Yeah, so it's like a cultural deal, you know. And, uh, you know, classical came from Europe. It took a while to grow into that. You know, I, I don't know anything about Europe at 10 years old, you know, but uh, uh, the older you get, it seems as though the more you realize that we're all hung together here, tied together. And uh, musical expression is just an extension of that. So it, it's valid. You know, bluegrass, you know, up in the hills, those people are all working, doing a certain kind of thing. Something comes out of their culture. Where is that from? Uh, Scottish uh, roots or something? Blue, you know, hills, mountains, and all that stuff. You know, really neat. Happy music. Some of it's sad, but it's it's like expression of how people are. It's a, it's an expression. One I was talking with some friends, and we heard some Spanish music, and I told him I says, well, gee, it sounds kind of it sounds kind of depressing. It almost sounds like some of those Jewish dirges or something like this. Well, he says this one, that, you know, it's expressing how depressed the Spanish people were at some time in their history. I said, oh, so they're just feeling the blues there too. You know, it was like. Uh, expression of how they were feeling and it's like what did he say oppressed people or suppressed people in any particular society so you have to get into the meaning of what's behind yeah. the music Padma at this time I'm gonna let you introduce your next number well I think we're gonna do a tune uh, that comes I think it was around the 50s Lambert Hendrix and Ross late 50s uh, tune called Sermonette Have you heard it yet? With that soulful message that you won't soon forget. It tells about real true love. People lost sight of through their sinful living and scorn and heaven above. It tells you to love one another that each man's your brother live right cause you know that you reap what you sow and so to have no regrets and to find what you're missing bow your head and listen to this sermon to the sermon. Well, thank you very much. A question I have, and then we're going to do the third number, and then we'll go back to Janelle on our panel, but um, between the shows, I was thinking about some things you just said on the first show, Padma, concerning how that music is not from you, but it comes through you. And that caused me to think about performances that happen and how sometimes there is a very special chemistry between the performer or performers and the audience and that that's not always the same. I recall about a year before Harry Chapin was killed being at one of his performances and it was at a opera house and it was a, a packed uh, audience and he came out and he was going to do I believe it was two 45 minute uh, 
uh, performances and with a break in between. And the first half went so well, it was so powerful with the audience, he came out to the edge of the stage and sat down and said, I have never had an audience that I have connected with better than this one. There will be no break. And he turned to the musicians and said, I'm going to do the following numbers. And he did those and then did his last half. So it was a very, very mm -hmm. powerful time over like two and a half hours. Um, do you, have you had that experience that some audiences somehow have that special kind of evening with you that's different from all others? Yes, actually we had something happen like similar to that um, on Art on the Green this summer. And uh, there was a performance, the, the choir that was playing there, and I'm trying to, Urban something or other choir, I wish I could remember what their names are now, but anyway, they had played on the big stage, we were playing on a smaller stage, and just everything, it was like the right kind of day, and the right everything was just feeling good. And uh, they came over after, and they started clapping along with us, and everybody started clapping. It was wonderful. I mean, you just felt this love, just love. And I think that's probably, it sounds like that's what he felt. Those are magic moments. That and you don't prepare them, you don't know when they're going to happen. And they're just electrical and magnifying. I mean, they're just, you can just feel the spirit, and it, it doesn't happen every time like that, but, oh, beautiful. Yes. Well, you have prepared another one, and this is one that everyone's going to recognize. It's a, it's a very common uh, musical number. Would you introduce it and then uh, perform? Right. This is a, a real, very popular jazz standard called Blackbird. I say bye 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 blackbird Where somebody waits for me Sugar sweet and so is he Bye bye blackbird Well no one here can love or understand me Oh what hard luck stories they all have Make my bed and light the light. I'll be home late tonight. Blackbird, bye bye. Again, just, just wonderful, and thank you so much uh, for that sharing of, of message through music. And we shall return to Janelle Berg. My question is going to have to do with association. We associate music with happy times. Uh, we'll have a particular song we'll hear, and it will trigger in our minds a wonderful occasion that we had. Or we'll have a sad song that we've, has comforted us when we felt sad. 
Um, how do you think that works, and how does music help us? How do we associate that way? Do you mean it's a hard question? Like in a know. sense of yes. healing, and why? And why is it that music will trigger this? Of all the experiences that we have, of course, it's like driving along and seeing something that we've seen a hundred times before, and we've had fun when we were doing that. But music tends to do that as well. We hear a song, and it we, it reminds us of a special occasion. Uh, and so people have adopted uh, special songs. It's our song, for example. I think that's the spirit, again, within people. You know, we had a, uh, we were playing up in Sandpoint for that downtown association this summer too, and there was a man who came along from Germany, and he was just really moved, and it was just a beautiful experience with him. And he said, no, no, you don't understand how much this means to me, because where he came from, he said, this kind of music, he didn't hear. He heard other kinds of music, but not what he wanted to hear. And so for him, that was, you know, touching, uh, triggered something within of what you're talking about. I think that it is. It's the spirit within people, and that's where it's a universal that relate. universal language again. Sometimes I'll relate it to therapy. You know, it, it, mm. it's it's like a a higher form of therapy. In other words, uh, but it it it. It probably brings things closer to a reality for people. Different songs trigger different things. You I mean you've already verbalized that? Um, different songs uh, bring back, like you know, let's say the musical, the American music form, the blues or whatever it is. Blues is good. Blues is bad. You know, there's good s stories and bad stories. And basically, it's like, you could almost call it like a slice of life, you know, each segment or each song that's, that's given birth to by people. The songs are written for a particular reason. They come from a person or through a person or whatever. They come floating through for a particular reason. And uh, what that reason is, of course, none of us really uh, have plugged into completely. But if it, if it brings people together, if it brings people to a point where they're, let's say, like there's an an audience and they're all showing joy and you're saying well gee this is a this is a real positive experience in other words it's people actually it is people working together the less division you have the more you can get stuff done I think and, and music can do that it can actually have a powerful message that brings people together and they mm -hmm. all are associating with a wonderful message or, or whatever that message might be at that particular time. Is that sort of what you're saying? Right. Well, I think um, it was last week that we were talking with Tony about Martin Luther King and uh, the one really powerful song that was universal was We Shall Overcome. And that, that was another song that moved a mass of people together. I mean, it, it's powerful. It still is powerful. Uh, it always will be powerful. One of the things that I think you're saying that, uh, that uh, went through my mind as you made that comment is that if you take that particular song, We Shall Overcome, whatever oppressed situation you might be in or oppressed group, you can identify with it. It's, it, it is so structured that it, was, it is not for just any one particular community of people, but uh, you can identify. And so maybe music does that somewhat better than some other forms of uh, communication that we have or or mechanisms in society, that it can be translated into different settings, situations, and it, it's the one thing that overcomes language barriers. I've heard many songs that in another language and I did not know the exact words, but the tune itself was either a tune from a song I did know or had uh, familiarity to where you could appreciate it. You could just feel, yeah. I think food, um, music is medicine. You know, it, it's, it's medicine for the soul. <laughs> we we don't have a whole lot of time left, but uh, Padma, I'd like to go back. We did this with Tom last week, and I would not want to end without letting you tell us some uh, experiences that you had with, in less than one minute with Ike and Tina Turner or Glenn Yalborough, uh, as Tom did last week. When we played together, we, we played at the Hungry Eye, and uh, actually I got to know them quite well, and actually opened for Mort Saul, too. I don't, probably lots of people still know Mort Saul, and that was a lot of fun because I could kind of incorporate different songs to what he was going to talk about, and he did a lot of things about 
President Kennedy, too, as you know. And um, then Dan Hicks and his hot licks. I was one of the original uh, hot licks. I'm, I'm out of time, but they inspired you, didn't they? And, uh, yes, yes, uh, absolutely. Learned a lot from each one, and they absolutely. from you. Well, on behalf of Janelle Burke and our staff, thank you both for being here. And again, we've had two wonderful weeks with you. It's the Lake City Rhythm News, and we hope to have you back sometime in the future. Thank you very much. Ladies thank and you. gentlemen, I'm sure that you've really enjoyed uh, these two programs and this uh, outstanding group. And I'd like to invite you to be with us again next week at the same time when we will discuss yet another issue that we believe is of importance to you. Until then, please have a good week. I am Tony Stewart. The North Idaho College Public Forum was videotaped live from the studios of instructional technology on the campus of North Idaho College for viewing at this more appropriate time. We invite you to join us again next week for another all-new edition of the North Idaho College Public Forum on this public television station.